Hi RHC, my name is Grace and I'll be sharing my testimony with you this morning. There's a verse in 1 Peter that describes Christians as a chosen people and belonging to God as his special possessions. I love this truth now, but for a long time I never felt specially chosen or treasured by God. More often than not, I saw myself as a victim of circumstances that were beyond my control. My life sort of began as an accident. My mom was a single mother and she had considered abortion but thankfully didn't go through with it. Uh, nevertheless, I was a happy child growing up in the US with people who loved me. Um, but things started changing. My mom met my stepdad and they got married and I felt like that special bond between me and my mom was being intruded on or taken away from me. Um, and we also had to move back from the US to Singapore and I, I was being taken from a place that I knew as my home. I was never able to process these feelings of grief and loss and the bitterness in my heart really took root and grew. Uh, years after moving, I still struggled. I hated being in Singapore and didn't have any friends and I didn't want to make new friends because I never thought anyone could ever understand what I'd been through. Um, I was deeply discontent with my life and angry that things had been taken from me against my will. I hated that I never had any control, so I resolved to be self-sufficient and decided that I couldn't rely on anyone or anything because there was always a risk of me losing it. Growing up in a Christian environment, I knew that God existed, but I doubted his character, whether he was trustworthy. I really struggled with the idea that God was good and that he cared about me because I didn't feel cared for. If he loved me, then why let all these things happen to me in my life? In my mind, he was in the sky somewhere, but still kind of irrelevant and I still had to make things happen on my own. So I worked hard at my sports and my studies and at being popular and attractive by society standards. But at the same time, I was getting tired slowly of having to keep up these standards of having it all. When you succeed, you might feel accomplished for a while, but when you're the only one holding your life together, you can't stop and you can't fail because if you do, then you lose everything. One day in my uni years, my mom was attending a Christian conference in Bali and I tagged along not intending to go for any of the talks but just to enjoy the beach and the hotel there. Um, but I happened to sit in for one talk and another and another and I was so taken by it. My main takeaway was there are good reasons and arguments for how we can know certain truths about the Christian God even if we don't feel it in our hearts at every moment. And over the next few months, I started reading more into it, started reading the Bible, and saw that I was effectively trying to give my life value and meaning from the things that I was doing, and it was exhausting and unsustainable. So I began to pray tentatively, okay God, maybe I can't do this by myself, but if you are the perfect father, then please show me because I don't see it now. And it wasn't an overnight change, but when I started asking for his help and stopped struggling to do it all on my own, he started to chip away at my hardened exterior and uncovered that all I really wanted was to be loved and taken care of. And I didn't want to do it all by myself, I was only doing it because I thought I had to. Over time, God patiently answered my questions about his trustworthiness by showing me the person of Jesus. He is the God who created this universe and then chose to give up all his power and control to show his love for us. His stepping down into our world tells us that he's able to identify with our pain. So how do I know that I can trust him? Because Jesus chose to suffer here with us and for us. He can hold my hand as I'm walking through dark times and say, I know how you feel, it hurts and it sucks. He can say with full conviction, I know what it's like not to fit in grace because he didn't either. He knows what it's like to be betrayed by friends and misunderstood by his own family and to have his father turn away from him because he went through those same things. Jesus endured these things and died on the cross even though he didn't deserve any of it. We fall into pride and stubbornness and unforgiveness and bitterness 
um, and out of our sinful nature, we hurt each other and cause suffering and endure it ourselves. But Jesus suffered even though he was perfect and blameless. He died to take our brokenness upon himself and to forgive the great cost of the wrong things that we've done and continue to do. Jesus came to do the one and only thing that matters to someone going through pain, to join them in their pain and suffer alongside them. But he didn't stop there. Easter is a celebration that Christ overcame sin and death. He rose again from the grave to give us hope that there will be a day with no more suffering and no more tears. There is redemption power in his love for all who struggle with sin and for those who suffer its effects. God's love is a perfect love and there's nothing like it in this imperfect and broken world. It's so foreign to us that when we see it, we don't know what to do. We shy away from it out of fear of the unknown or we don't trust it because it's too good to be true. But it's not too good to be true. It can be understood and it can be experienced. I believe if you ask him for his help, he will help you understand and feel his love for you. He will heal you and he will make you whole, just like he did for me. So today, would you consider trusting in Jesus to do that for you?